but yeah, black bear is a definite bust, but you don't want to have any any extra weight than what you absolutely have to have. That was uh, that's what I've heard, and that was our issue we, when we first started the you know coming out to the Rockies. I don't know why, but we always planned, okay, let's make a big square around the entire state, you know, go from A to B, B to C, but then that was our issue. Whenever we wanted to ride something technical, we were all loaded down. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the V-Strum, that's where it kind of loses a little bit, you know, suspension, stock suspension doesn't do very well when you're loaded down. No. And my brother's a bigger dude, he's probably 240, you know, 6'3", and he <laughs> He's a gadget guy, so he rides heavy all the time, no matter what. <laughs> he just can't bring himself to leave enough stuff at home, but uh, he'll learn. Yeah, I know a couple guys like that. Doesn't they got the French press coffee makers and everything else <laughs> in their bag. You know, there, it doesn't take long. I get back, and I've been doing it religiously now. If I've taken it on two trips and haven't used it, it goes out. I don't put it back in. Yeah. I do splurge on a chair, which I have in one of my soft bags. It fits right in there. Uh-huh. It takes up volume, a little bit of weight, a pound, pound and a half, whatever. And then I'll, I typically bring my fishing pole no matter what. I mean, yeah, it sucks to deal with. I got a long thing back there, but um, it's a four-piece, so it's not in the way too bad. Yeah, I usually have mine with me. In fact, I got a little spinning rod in the top box today. Oh, nice. We bring it along. We just did, uh, like I was saying, we just did Cook City, uh, that whole area. Oh, and then we did the Bighorns. I thought the Bighorns were better off-road riding, uh, more opportunity for it, the further away from Yellowstone you got. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, we brought our poles, and we dedicated one three-hour stretch one evening to fish in the Clark's Fork. And, uh, you know, we did enough research on it and whatever, and, so, yeah, we just usually bring our four-piece spinning reels and a couple of countdown rapplers, and I had the biggest stream trout on. I saw him and everything, and my pole busted and shot the lure back in my face. <laughs> oh, no. It makes you keep coming back, though, because you never know when you're going to get that 20-incher. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll leave you down here by Meeker. I'll, I'll turn and go up river. Uh-huh. That friend that I'm going to watch the Bronco game with, he's got the White River that runs right through his place. Oh. And it's it's got some nice fishing on it, so. What's that have then? It's trout and whitefish. Okay. Rainbows or cuts? Yeah. Or Rainbows, okay. cuts, um, and some browns. Browns, nice. I spent about six months I lived in Laramie, Wyoming, and just got hooked on the trout fishing. Yeah, this little river down here, the Williams Fork, is really good upstream. It's all private down here, but it's got some good good trout in it. A lot of a lot of brookies. 